Welcome back all, this is Daz from Mudaro Techniques. So up this week is just a very, very quick little video on something I stumbled across in the home automation world. Now, a few people have reached out to me. I've gone down the Arduino line and some people, a bit like myself, had to do a lot of learning just to get up to the basics to be able to use it. So this little feature or this website that I'm about to go into, WLED, sort of takes out a lot of that guesswork, so to speak, and has a very, very easy downloading or uploading interface that allows you to get all sorts of lighting effects. Some of them are not very relevant to model railways, however, you can customize some like really cool lighting effects. So let's go over to the interface. Please consider to sign up my Patreon. Every little bit counts to the ongoing cost of running uh, even a little, a small YouTube channel like mine. So without further ado, enough of the waffle, let's get started. So let's get into what this is all about. So, so this is the website at knowledge.ge, and now we'll, I will put this link to on the description below, or you can just type into your Google search like such. Go WLED, and it brings you to the same place. So that's obviously a very easy way to. So basically, it's a Wi-Fi LED. So right from the outset you do need Wi-Fi where are you going to use this because you access the interface via a device whether it's a tablet computer or mobile phone via the Wi-Fi so it's implemented on a ESP 8266 or an ESP 32 or a little Wemo um, D1 like I'm going to use so then what basically what is a web server that controls what we're going to call NeoPixels so the WS 2812B and the list goes on. So there is a, a list of supported compatible wi uh, sorry hardware here. So before you go out and if you want to give it a go, so you go what sort of boards you want and the lighting is down here a little bit further. Um, it's all sorts you can look at doing with this. So you can actually integrate it into Home Assistant if you're so inclined regarding home automation. I've done that on mine. Now, also the supported light control interfaces, as we discussed, it's either Android or iOS, which we're going to look at here. There's a myriad others, MQTT and the like. That's something that I might get into MQTT a little bit later on. So some of the, the, the features, we're not going to go through all of these. I'll let you read this in your own time. So the, so the WS28112FX library integrates over 100 effects that they've come up with. Fast LED noise effects with 50 palettes. So that's thousands and thousands tens of thousands of colors that you can come up with and probably the the best thing about it is this settings page so once you've uploaded onto your device your esp device you can pretty well do any of the configuration over the network so you don't have to come keep coming plugging it back into the computer like you would have to using the arduino and some of the other lighting effects that i've done all right, so what we're going to do, we'll quickly go across to the, the install page and we'll, we'll start installing it. PCBWay offers a variety of services ranging from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing, CNC machining and a variety of materials. If you do not have the correct tools for the job, you can quickly upload your Gerber file for a PCB and press enter and get a quote in no time at all. Then select your material, finish and other post-processing customization like PCB assembly where all the components are added. If you are new to PCBs, their professional review team will review your file and notify you once they are good to be manufactured. This makes PCB Way a good option for your projects. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. So we're across here on the install page. Now, the first thing we need to look at is what version we're going to download now. These top versions here are all beta releases, so it's up to you whether you want to go and try one of those. I haven't yet delved into those, so the release I'm going to download is 14.4. Of note, what you can also download is Sound Reactive, where you can actually upload these little microphones to this Sound Reactive part of it uh, version, I should say, where you can actually connect up some little microphones to the 
to the ESP device and it actually listens out and the and the and the lights dance accordingly. It's quite cool in a in a home cinema type um, application. Obviously, probably not something you want to do on your model trains, unless that's what you're into. That's fine as well. So maybe comment below if it's something that you might use. Um, I've yet to have a play with that, but I've seen some really cool videos of what people are doing with it. So anyway, back over to the upload. So we're going to go and select on 14.1. We're going to go and do the install. Now up here, basically what, because it's, the interface comes in via the USB. So you just got to make sure you pick out the right, correct USB. So... I know mine is COM port 12, and with that, we shall do the uploading. So it's going to collect, so connect, I should say. So the next thing is install the WLED. So that's what we want to do. Do you want to? So it's just going to walk you through just to make sure it lets you know. So anything on this ESP device is going to be overwritten, so to speak, with this program. So now we're going to do the install. It is reasonably quick. Now, for the sake of the video, I have sped that up. That probably took about two minutes in real time to upload it. So at this point in time, it's just com installation complete. You know it's done correctly. It's going to ask you to configure your Wi-Fi. So just be mindful, um, this is only a, a 2G application. So for the people that got 5 and 6G Wi-Fi's, you can't use it. But most Wi-Fi routers, you can, you'll be able to split it off. That's not a worry at all. So it's just a matter of adding your your Wi-Fi password and configuring in the Wi-Fi and it'll connect to it. So we now this little device is now connected to the network. Now we can go over to a separate screen and visit the device. All right, so what we've got here, we've got the interface on the ESP up on the address that we've defined in in the settings so the configuration across the top here so we won't go deep dive into this too much this is more just an introduction into this into this program so to speak so when we want to go into the the what the LED settings as I said we'll go a little bit further a little bit deeper as we go further into it um, in subsequent videos but the one main ones we need to look at here today is the number of LEDs. So currently I've got nine LEDs and I'll insert that there. So we've got we've got nine LEDs. So basically what the program's doing at this point in time, we're skipping the first LED or zero LED, which is this one here. So that's why that one's always illuminated. So um haven't quite worked out how we get around that get around that at this point in time. Um it's just what it is at this point whilst I'm still having a play myself. So so if we then want to go up to 16 LEDs is what this is. So obviously the string, I did have a string that came in from um, a supplier, but it's not working properly, so it's going to have to go back. But I will go over to where my daughter's room is, where we've set up some of these lights on a similar system, and I'll just show you some of the effects. So once you sort of uh, just quickly play around with the LEDs, so the LEDs we've got are the, the WS2812s, uh, NeoPixels. We just go down the bottom and then go just off screen, sorry. There we go. You go to the save. And then we go back up to the back. And here we got the interface here. So you've got a myriad of different types of effect modes. So some of them are pretty cool. So solid is, as we suggest, it's just solid, solid color. Then you can actually play around with the color. I won't go into that one. I'll let you have a play. Bouncing ball, if you've got some sort of, you know, you're doing... If you're doing some sort of um, carnival or something similar, you can see it's going to go do all the LEDs. Some of the ones I like are a bit like your DJ lights. You know, obviously very, very... What we might actually do is, because that zero LED is just like the test LED, we'll cover it up because that's actually... is uh, obviously very bright. So you can actually play around with the brightness of it, sort of up the top here and just screw that across and you can see it but I've got it right down obviously for the video so I'm not uh, blowing up the footage too much 
So I will show you on the bigger string, we've got other LEDs we, or other ones we can look at, like fireworks, um, a television, um, and a lightning one. That looks pretty cool as well. So that's so the first one I'll show you on the, the larger string to actually what it can look like over a sort of bigger area we'll look at. And it's just got up the top here in effects mode, you can actually go searching on it. So the first one we'll look at is, oops, not the lighthouse, lightning and what that looks like. And obviously you can change the color, the color grading and the timings with all this in these sections here. Now I, obviously the effects intensity and as I said the, the effects speed, um, I've yet to have a play with that, I've just left that on the default. Next one we're going to have a look at is the TV simulator. Um, I know Dr. Bunzer did a very, very nice sketch for this, but obviously this is something that you can use this for as well, and I'll inset that. Yet, yet again, you can play around with the intensities, the colors, and also the timings of, of the simulator as well. So the next one we'll look at is Firework Starburst mode. And this one's kind of got a really cool, he's got some cool colors to it. So I can see that you can sort of put this at the back of a, a carnival or something. So obviously to some sort of diffuse the light somehow, that'd be really fun um, sort of thing to do around some, of, some sort of carnival or festival type thing. So the next one we'll look at is a fire simulator. Um, I don't think this one is as quite as effective. It may be a little bit better once we have a play around with some of the colors and some of the timings and the like, but um, obviously it is there and you can customize them. All right, the last one we'll look at is uh, theater mode. So this is definitely one that you could use around, because um, obviously you can get quite small NeoPixel LEDs to put around like signs and all that, that you know chase around the old school. Australian and American theatres so that's something that could be looked at obviously changing the colours the speed and everything and the like or um, for the larger scales out there it would be quite a nice effect as well now we'll finish up as you can see there's dozens and dozens of different modes that you can use um, all in alphabetical order you can search from the top here then obviously over to this side here to the right we can start looking at creating some of our own so i'll have a bit of play around and i'll um, in do a, a video moving forward to that so please comment below if that's something that you would you've either done with wled interface um, and the like so also those people that are into home assistant out there you can actually load it into home assistant here as well um, just be mindful you can't then control it off the application so you can't just purely type the the IP address into a phone or a tablet or PC, um, you have to delete it off here, which I've had to do. So that's the the end of the video at this point in time. So thanks for watching. So as always, we've got I've got three questions. First one, obviously, is it something that you might look at doing? I think lighting is a really cool effect on layouts, and I've done a few different lighting effects um, on the channel over the years. Number two, if there's any sort of um, ways that I could do it better or better ways of using NeoPixels that that have as much controllability as what probably this interface does, please um, comment in the um, comment section below. And number three, if there's any glaring errors, like always, please point them out and we'll try to right my wrongs and try to, to, to grow this channel and um, for, for better content, so to speak. And for all those people out there that might be interested in helping me out in regards to progressing this channel forward i've got a patreon link there so uh, any little bit counts and i do appreciate those people i have given donations over the time to the channel to, to help me out to some of the costs associated with making a youtube channel such as this because yes i have a, a sponsor that pay me for a video however i'm on my on my own when it, regarding when i've got to make bigger purchases I've got um, a video series that will start coming up um, on a new 3D printer, a filament 3D printer that I'm getting into, and something else that I think is a little bit exciting, Gridfinity, um, which I can't understand why at this point in time it hasn't been sort of spoken about in the train, model train world, purely because what it does, what is Gridfinity you might ask? Gridfinity is purely an organisational scheme, so I've 
if you're anything like me, you've got hundreds if not thousands of little detail parts and all sorts, and you can make this modular sort of approach and print these little bins and the like to, to assist you with one, keeping track of them, and two, and make sure you have a, a tidy workbench, which is certainly I do not. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques.